Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Tuesday, and welcome from Edward and Ginger, the guinea pigs, who uh, seem to be just getting bigger and bigger. Um, I think I'm pretty sure they're turning into rabbits, but anyway. Uh, this morning, from our backyard, I um, wanted to give you another shot of uh, how well our strawberries uh, just the two plants are going, the others are just starting to um, develop, but as you can see there's quite a cluster of strawberries coming on. And the funny thing is, to make these grow, these are the solutions that you need. It's not just a simple matter of putting the plants into there and, and letting the water do its work. You actually have to add something to it to make it <clears throat> to make them grow and to make them flower and to make them um, uh, produce fruit the things that you normally get out of the soil um, are condensed and put into um, uh, into into a liquid form uh, it's all it's an all organic liquid form and then you control how much of the nutrient it gets you, I decide what the plants need to to thrive. This morning, I just want to, and you'll I'll, you'll understand the point in a tick. Uh, I want to read this quote. Uh, I once, I was once a child with a dream, looking up to the stars. Now I'm an adult in a spaceship looking down at our beautiful Earth. To the next generation of dr dreamers, if we can do this, just imagine what you can do. Any guesses as to who said that? If you read the news this week, you'd know. No, it wasn't um, Neil Armstrong or any of the, the men that shot into space in the Apollo missions. It was Richard Branson, who became the first person to fly in a spaceship that he had funded into space. Um, a dream he'd had as a, as a young boy. And he saw the realisation of that. But he didn't do it alone. He didn't build the rocket. He, he needed others to, to do all of that. He provided the funding, but he needed others to actually make all the parts work and a pilot and trained um, pilots to actually take the thing up there and I'm assuming to bring them back safely. Um, I'm assuming they're back. Um, so what does Richard Branson and all the parts that make him work and the strawberries and the nutrient solutions that make them grow got to do with you and I as Christians. Well, I'm glad you asked. In Second Peter, and in chapter 1, and starting from verse 3, it's a bit of a long read this morning, longer read this morning, but it goes, As his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness, through by the knowledge of him, who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises, that though they, these you may be part, sorry, that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through through lust, but also for this reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, to virtue knowledge, to knowledge self-control, to self-control perseverance. To perseverance, godliness. To godliness, brotherly kindness. To brotherly kindness, love. For if these things are yours and abound in you, you will neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted, even to blindness, and has forgotten that he was cleansed from these old sins. Jesus is in the business of making us into his image, to, to perf perfecting us, our faith, sanctifying us, changing us from our old self to a new self. And it's not something that you and I can do by, our, by ourselves. Just like the strawberries need the elements that I control and I give them to grow and produce, just like Richard, Richard Branson needed to give funding to allow other people to do their jobs well, <clears throat> so that he could realise a boyhood dream. For us to realise where God wants us to be, we need him to instill or to install these other ingredients 
like virtue, like self-control, like brotherly love, like love, kindness. It's, it's almost a repetition Peter has here of where Paul writes about the fruit of the Spirit. All of those elements are making us and perfecting us and changing us so that we may um, become more like be more, become more like Jesus Christ. Um, he doesn't, you know, if you, it says here in verse 8, if these things are yours and they abound in you, you will not be barren or unfruitful in the knowledge of Christ. Saying all of those elements put together will bring you closer and closer to a knowledge of Jesus and help you to become more and more reflective of who Jesus is. It won't, it won't turn you into a Jesus. It'll turn you into an image of him and one <clears throat> that will bear much fruit. A person who will know how to be kind, to share, to love, to be fruitful. So just like my strawberries, you and I need those right ingredients added by Jesus. He controls the measuring. He controls the, the elements that go into that. But see, the strawberries have to do something interesting. They have to allow those nutrients in. They have to allow that process to take place. They have to accept what I give them. And it's no different for you and I. If we block off our roots, block off our inlet, then Jesus can't add those elements and we'll become unbarren, unfruitful, stuck in our lusts and our desires and our own self selfishness and self-importance and become completely unfruitful. And Jesus talks about an unfruitful church too well. The three unfruitful churches mentioned in the book of Revelation. And each of them uh, are told that they will be cut off. That they'll have no further part in the kingdom and the plan of salvation if they don't allow that conduit to open up. So the encouragement for today is allow Jesus to do what Jesus does best. Mix up the portions, mix up the solution, add the elements and just allow him. Just allow him to allow that process to happen. Trust and obey is the old song that we sing. So Jesus is saying, trust me, I know what, what you need. Just obey because it'll work out for your benefit and your best. And my friends, I hope that you have a fantastic day as you too seek to allow those elements to grow in you. Let's pray. Father, <clears throat> thank you for today. Thank you for the crisp air that we're experiencing right now. But more importantly, uh, thank you for allowing us to experience life with you. Lord, we may not get the chance to fly in our own rocket ship into space and look down at the earth. But Lord, one day we'll get to look at you face to face. And that is all that we need. So we ask, Lord Jesus, in this day, that you bless us and keep us, guide us in the way that you would have us go. Help us to be a blessing to others, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Hello, my friends, from my strawberry crop to your home, and from, let's not forget, Edward and Ginger. Have a fantastic day, and until we see each other again, take care, God bless, and I'll see you soon.